rain. It's apparently my new reality. <laughs> I think it's official. It's just never going to not rain. I am not quite sure where the trail is at all right now. I think I came from here. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, back with you. It is mid-June. I am down in North Carolina, about to do a three-day, two-night backpacking and hammock camping trip in the Linville Gorge, which is a pretty spectacular gorge, as the name would suggest, down in North Carolina. I got my backpack over here, uh, got like a base weight of nine pounds, which is pretty cool. It's actually the exact same loadout that I used on my last video, uh, the old loggers path up in PA. But I shaved like a pound, a pound and a half because I'm down south right now and I'm expecting warmer temps. Although right now it is uh, 61 degrees, a bit overcast. You can see I got the rain gear on already. Um, I look to have a chance of rain every day, but that's OK. I also have a chance of sun. Um, and we're just going <laughs> to hope for the best with that. But I'm going to pop my pack on right now. I got the uh, Jeep already <coughs> settled. Well, actually, let me put on the uh, rain cover. Speaking of rain, there we go. And I actually did bring my Dutchware rain cover. It's a little bit lighter than the one that came with the pack, just because I already owned one. But speaking of gear, though, um, as I mentioned, this is pretty much the same loadout except for... Um, some warm weather gear that I had on the last trip like gloves and uh, base layers like thermal underwear and stuff like that so I'm probably going to skip going over the gear too much in this video but as I go if you're curious feel free to check out that other video I'll link it up here but yeah let's get into it feels pretty good nice and light all right so according to my GPS which I have loaded up with some data uh, we're not going to go through there which over there is the river, Linville River. And we're gonna cut over here. That's where we'll return from. But we're gonna start our loop this way. I'm going clockwise. So, a little more explanation on what I'm doing here. The first time I came here was actually with my friend Mike going on five years ago. And that was the infamous trip where he got his name <laughs> uh, Trail Slipper because he uh, showed up with no shoes or boots. And I happen to have slippers in the car and he hiked in those. <laughs> but on that trip, we had a blast and saw some really beautiful stuff in the gorge, but it was really only just a little pinch uh, sliver of what the gorge has to offer in terms of um, the areas that we saw. This time, I figured maybe up to Annie a little bit, also known as probably biting off more than I can chew, but I'm gonna try to do something called the Grand Loop, which is about 40 miles and roughly yeah, looks like nine or 10,000 feet of gross elevation gain or so. So probably 15 miles a day, maybe 10 miles in the last day. Something like that. We'll see how it goes depending on the weather. But should be a good time. Luckily, I have a light load out with this backpack here. So hopefully that means I can make some decent mileage so far it's pretty peaceful and it's not openly raining on me which is nice luckily at the visitor center here there is a footbridge that goes over the river um, at some point probably midday tomorrow on this trip I'm gonna have to come to the point where I cross the river uh, the Linville River, which can be pretty notorious for not being passable. 
And that's what happened to Mike and I when we came years ago. The river was just not passable. And so we had to kind of alter our situation. On this trip, at the northern end, which is where I am now, we have that footbridge. At the southern end, I'm gonna to have to do a crossing. As of right now, from looking at the water gauge in Nebo, which you can look up online, it's flowing at 180. And they say above 200 is pretty much unsafe to cross. And I have rain in the forecast, so I may have to use a contingency plan when I get there. But, but. things are getting a little tricky already. This plunge basin trail is not what I want. It distinctly goes away from my GPS track. There are a decent amount of official trails in here administered by the uh, United States Forest Service. There are dozens upon dozens of unofficial trails. And uh, that's what I'm looking for right now. Something called the Urix Trail. Y-O-R-I-C-K-S. Uh, it's supposed to be right around here. And this GPS data I got from linvillegorge.net, which is awesome. I'll put a link in the video description. Um, is very well known and accurate. I just don't see where the actual trail is, even though it says I'm on top of it. Not a great start for me, although I don't know if this is something. Now, now I'm just second guessing everything. <sighs> Maybe I'm overthinking it. Nope. That says I'm right on top of it. Well, let's try it. It's, uh, it's more open than it was over there. I know some of these trails are said to be pretty grown in, but this looks really tight. But according to my GPS, it's this way. Wow. So I guess we really just get into some pretty <laughs> off the beaten path stuff right away, I guess. Now, I always hike with maps, compass, and GPS, but this area I've always seen is highly advised to bring a GPS or a phone app. Uh, I think the Avenza app is what's mostly recommended around here. This doesn't seem right either. Oh, there's a tarp. Huh. This appears to have been here for a while. Trucker tarps. Not creepy at all. Huh. Somebody abandoned camp, apparently. And a poncho. <laughs> or uh, whatever it's called. And their whole hammock. It's weird. Still don't know where the actual trail is. It says it's over this way. I don't know, I'm off to a bad start here. It's like 10 o'clock. But it says I'm right on top of it. I guess we'll keep moving this way. We'll leave this creepiness behind. Okay, certainly doesn't look like a trail, but I guess it kind of is. There's pink tape. I guess that's guiding me on top of my GPS coordinates, which I appear to be dead on at this point, so I'm just gonna Keep a close eye on that and keep eyeballing this pink tape and uh, see how this goes. We really are getting right into it on this trip, aren't we? Whew. All right, 
they say that a mile in the gorge is worth two anywhere else. And they have some pretty grown-in trails and some brutal terrain here in the gorge, especially when you're going in and out of the river. Uh, the difference from the ridge to the river, I think it's 1,500 feet, maybe 1,900 in some spots. But I'm just gonna keep following this pink tape, double checking my GPS. GPS. Well, the tape disappeared, which was probably done by somebody unofficially. This is a wilderness area, so you're not allowed to actually do any blazes or markings of any kind, build any structures, anything like that. So we're just gonna follow on the ridge, which I believe is what we're supposed to be doing, and slowly making our way through. Nice back here. I mean, my timeline's a little off, but it's nice. Sometimes it looks like a trail, sometimes it doesn't. I'll just say, if I didn't have GPS, I would be totally screwed right now. 100%. I don't know when the last time somebody used this trail was. But, or maybe they have, but it's just not many of them. But I'm just hoping the next trail is better. Then an eighth of a mile. It appears I uh, get to the intersection with something else. Now I don't know how much better it's going to be, but uh, now I'm just working my way through it. It's not raining, but I'm glad I have the rain gear on. And just a t-shirt underneath so I don't sweat through, but all these wet branches and limbs and everything would be soaking me if not. <sighs> Okay, this is a little more open here. Uh, let's see what this intersection brings me. Doesn't look like much. But this is the intersection with what apparently is Gulf Contour Trail. Running this way, you can kind of see it looks, well, more like a trail than what I just came off of, which honestly, if I was coming this way from the other way, I never would have. I never would have caught that without a GPS. There's just no way possible. I never would have gotten here without a GPS. But anyway, I am hot. So I think it's time to get this ring gear off even if it means catching some moisture off of this brush because I'm starting to sweat and that's just as wet, but more gross. I still got the helium rain gear that I had on the last trip. That's six ounces a piece well worth it and they stuff into their their little pocket there's a breast pocket on there and a back pocket on the pants but i'm gonna probably just put them in the mesh outer part of my pack so they can dry a little bit and breathe because i'll be using these for warmth as well i mentioned earlier i got my weight down on this trip by leaving behind some cold weather layers you could still get into the upper 40s on this trip I didn't bring my puffy jacket. I just have a long sleeve shirt and I'll use these rain gear, hard shells, for warmth. Um, probably tomorrow morning or maybe even tonight. But right now it is too hot. Oh, there we go. Oh, I might even keep the pant legs up for a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna stuff these away. Probably keep the pack cover on just to keep the moisture from accumulating on my pack. I'll stuff those off and keep on moving. There's nothing like a couple miles of <laughs> intense bushwhacking to make you really appreciate a nice, <laughs> well laid out trail. Although compared to official trails, this would probably still be considered pretty dense. But it feels amazing compared to what I went through. <sighs> We're up to a few miles in. And the trail's leveled out. Up on the ridge here. And it feels pretty good. Maybe if the view pops up, I'll have a little lunch break. Of some sort. Which would be nice. Getting a little sun coming through too, which is great. Uh, right over there. So 
I'm not getting rained on right now. No internet around here. And I got a little bit. I got a text message out in the parking lot, but for the most part, I'd say don't bank on it. So I got my phone in airplane mode and I don't have a weather band radio. So all I know is we have chances of showers every day and we'll see what happens and react accordingly. But right now it's pretty nice. This hatchet mark here caught my eye. Sometimes back in the day they would use those for property line markers. That's why I recognized it. And I've seen a few of these as we go. Like I said, may or may not be legal. And uh, those of you out there who love trees probably don't like seeing that. But either way, somebody did that. One up ahead and one over there here. And I thought at first it was letting me know that the trail goes over there. But a quick ch check of the GPS led me to realize that this is where the trail branches. I forget the name of that trail, Jib or something like that, maybe, maybe. But Gulf Contour continues around here and then bends down. And uh, I believe we'll lose some elevation. But if it wasn't for that, if I was just blindly following the trail, I could have easily taken either one of these. And it would have been <laughs> a crapshoot if it was the right one. So luckily I checked the GPS when I came across those markings. And it appears we're headed this way. So, that's good. And I caught that, I suppose. I held out as long as I could before stopping for lunch. Didn't exactly find a wide open vista, but told myself I was gonna stop to eat by one. It's uh, 2 o'clock now, so I blew that target, and I just decided to stop. So I actually made a real meal, a uh, hot meal that is. Did some yellow curry, Mountain House, expiration April 2050. <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's uh, good for another 30 years, apparently. But uh, Thai dish, I guess. Zucchini, peas, red peppers. Well, it looks pretty saucy, actually. Maybe I added the right amount of water. That's pretty good. I like the peas. Oh, there's some zucchini right there. That's nice. So, my wife will be happy. I'm getting my vegetables right now. For dinner, uh, tonight and tomorrow, I have a new brand that I found on Amazon. I'll give you a little critique of that, I guess. But um, I just heated this up in my alcohol stove that I showed in the last video as well. And um, I guess I'll hang here, probably give myself till 2.30. Um, sunset isn't until, I guess, after 8.30 or so. So I got maybe five to six hours, uh, realistically, before I have to find camp. I'm closing in on six miles, uh, which isn't a lot <laughs> of miles, considering that it's two in the afternoon. But... It is, it is what it is. I, uh, I got a little bit of a, a later start because of my confusion finding that trail at the beginning and then those first two miles were just really slow. It's picked up now. It's pretty nice. Um, I'm on what's called the Red North Trail. Not sure if that's an official trail or not, but it's a lot more um, established. So I'm finding my way through it pretty good. We came off of the red trail, about to hook up with, I believe, Huckleberry Point or something to that effect. But there's a little spur, and I think we're going to pop out and get our first view. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. Look at that. <laughs> this is like half a mile later or something like that. It's 3 o'clock now. I've been taking my time, but, hmm, you think I should have held out and have my meal here? Probably, but sometimes you just take it as you get it. But look at that. You can see the Limville River down there, or maybe you can't, but it's way tucked down in there. I can hear it in the distance a little bit. 
And that is the gorge, my friends. And we're going to see more of this as we go for sure. Whew, don't step too far that way. But that is beautiful. So basically, just to put it in perspective, I'm at the north end of the gorge right now. And it's basically a long, skinny loop that I'm doing. You got both sides of the gorge. And I'm going to work my way down one side, headed south. And eventually, I'm going to go over the top of that. I believe, I could be wrong, but that I would have to assume that's Hawksbill, which is a pretty prominent mountain around here. I'm going to work my way down there. There's Lake James down at the end, and we're going to cross the river tomorrow at some point, hopefully, if all goes well, uh, way down the end there, and then make our way back up north here to the vehicle, you know, somewhere over there where I, where I came from. Always crazy on these trips to look out at what you're about to do and head back down to those peaks way down there. But somehow I guess I will get there. Hopefully. Stop for a little snack break. Some electrolyte uh, Mio Sport electrolyte little squeeze thing for my water. Some beef jerky, trail mix, etc. And then I noticed it started getting real dark real quick. Perhaps the uh, storm gods heard me talking about how I was planning on setting up camp before they hit. And they might be trying to thwart my efforts. In fact, I think I just felt a raindrop. Well, that's okay. If I got to put the rain gear back on, I will. It's right there on the outside of my pack. But, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I guess I should wrap this snack up and get moving again. See what happens here. See if I can't find a decent campsite with water before uh, the water comes down on me. Whew. I'm up about, I'd say, eight, nine hundred, maybe closing in on a thousand feet of elevation gain since my lunch spot back there with my coconut curry. Now here's a pretty cool campsite on the ridge. I would imagine this is probably normally a view. But look at that. If that doesn't tell you a storm's coming, I don't know what it does. A little fire pit there. Some ominous wind. Barometric pressure is dropping according to my Casio watch. I got it on, uh, uh, you could call it airplane mode to save battery, but I got the barometric uh, pressure on there. And a compass. And boy, am I not going to step too far. <laughs> I cannot see anything beyond those bushes right there that are like 15 feet in front of me. This is um, pretty crazy. It's almost kind of in, entices me more to call it early today because I'm missing out on some views. I'm just socked in. The only problem is I'm up on this ridge. There is no water. Um, that was really my decision to not grab water at the last um, stream crossing that I was at. Where am I going here? Uh, this way. I didn't grab any. But I had it in my head that I wanted to camp somewhere with flowing water so I could just have that convenience. But now, with miles of ridge walk in front of me, um, well, I'm facing the downside of that decision. I 
Wow. I came out of nowhere. It's pretty weird. Rock structure right there. I believe this is sitting bare, or at least it's it's tagged as sitting bare on my GPS. Can't even fit it all in this frame here. Towering above me there. That's pretty impressive. I don't know if this is something you can see um, from across the gorge on the other side or not. It's kind of in the trees, but that surprised me. I really just came out of nowhere. And the trail just kind of wraps around it. We're headed this way. That's pretty neat. Oh, look. I actually see a little anchor there. And there, and there. So there's a route up it. You see that? See that anchor there, and there. Can you imagine climbing up that? Some of you out there that climb are like, yeah, totally. But <laughs> I don't rock climb. And that sketches me out, even to think about going up that thing. But it's probably pretty cool once you get on top. There's definitely some good rock climbing around here in Libbyville uh, Gorge, from what I've read as I've studied the hiking routes. Wow. Pretty cool. I see another route up that side. Oh, and that overhang there. All right. Well, no rock climbing for me, just backpacking and fantasizing about being in my hammock. Definitely fantasizing about that. <sighs> well, no water yet, but really been pouring on the elevation gain. And I do believe I'm within spitting distance of Hawksbill Summit. Unfortunately, I'm going to end up summiting, summiting that today in this here fog, but should be right up ahead. Good news is on the other side of the summit there's a waterfall listed and you can't have a waterfall without water I believe this is the top nice little area fire pit back there fire ring <sighs> could probably get a tent in there you could definitely get a tent in there trees aren't quite substantial enough i guess you could get creative with a hammock in here it'd probably be pretty windy and there's probably a pretty good view normally but not for me this time all right well the fog's cool in its own way now we descend for the water, water. okay here's the deal i'm just a little bit below the summit here According to my GPS, right around here is something called the Ledge Trail. Which, <laughs> like that first trail, I'm having a real tough time finding. Um, at this point, I'm an hour away from sunset, but it's getting dark and overcast. And the threat of rain seems to be picking up. I don't know if I want to try to find this thing right now. I hear it's pretty hard to follow and there's some rough terrain too. So I think I'm going to make a safety and sanity decision and bail on finding this ledge trail. When I was up top, it's not ideal, but there were some puddles of water on the rock face up there where it was collecting water. That could totally get me through tonight. So I think I'm gonna double back up here, see if I can't find some trees to put a hammock on. And I guess we're gonna call Hawksbill home for tonight. It's just don't wanna be trying to navigate and stay on top of a bushwhacking trail right now in the dark uh, the downside is the water situation but like I said it might be a little rough on my filter but puddle water is just gonna have to do so try to find some trees and figure this out as I go back up <laughs> the summit here based on the weather conditions it's probably smarter for me to set up the hammock and the tarp now before any rain kicks in somehow it's eight o'clock today uh didn't quite get the miles i wanted to but 
tomorrow um, I'll have nothing to do but wake up and hike. So there's my setup. It's not super ideal. These are the best trees right around here. Uh, I'm right over from that fire pit. I don't know how much wood I'll have. And with the wind and everything, I don't know if I'll even attempt to fire. But nonetheless, I set up here on the ridge. Hopefully the wind won't beat me up too much. The trees are just about as close together as I can get from my tarp. I got that choked up pretty good on the tree. And the hammock eh, could be a little tighter. But these whoopee, whoopee hooks are pretty much maxed out as far as how tight I can get them. Um, it'll do. I got my Simply Light Designs under quilt on there. And my top quilt in there. Down top quilt from hammock gear fluffing up. So that's that if it starts raining i'll be good so i got my bee free filter and i'll just head back the actual summit's right over the top here um i'll hit one of these puddles up i guess and see what i can do all right well definitely less than ideal but this should uh where it does filter out any Bacteria, protozoa, cysts, etc. The only thing it doesn't do is viruses. I'm not worried about that up here. So it's probably going to be a little tough on the filter, but I'm only out here for a few days. So try to brush away some of the surface stuff here. And uh, is what it is. Try not to disturb the sediment. Oh boy. There's lots of these puddles around here on the top. And as I dip in, it disturbs. All the sediment down at the bottom so i'll probably just do one dip per puddle and then come back and uh you know i could hit this in a little bit when it settles again but that right there is a half liter and i just got a little water bladder oh yeah it's going through fine so there it is i got water for drinking like I said I got a couple of those new dinners but I don't know we're losing daylight I'm not sure if I'll share that with you tonight or um, maybe I'll show you the one I eat uh, the dinner I eat tomorrow they're both the same brand I forget what they're called but yeah, that's pretty much it for me today I'm gonna lose light real quick here and I'm pretty tired it's been a long day so I'm gonna hydrate cook some dinner hit the hammock and uh, probably pass out pretty quick and next thing you know it'll be morning you what my motivation to get out of this hammock right now is about zero but I think the rain has actually tapered off it might have actually stopped it might just be some drops blowing off the trees the wind was ripping through here last night blowing me around all night the trees I'm on aren't that big to begin with so I was getting rocked around pretty good and let me tell you what this um trail winder simply light designs it's a combination it's an under quilt with a built-in under quilt protector which is basically just a water resistant but breathable outer shell on it it's about three maybe three and a half ounces heavier than my down under quilt but that was well worth the wait because last night I noticed the tarp really sounded like it was flapping around, but I was like half asleep and listening to it for quite a while. And then I realized that corner due to the high winds, the corner of my tarp had completely popped off and the rain was blowing in and this underquilt was soaked, but it's got synthetic climate shield insulation in it which keeps working even if it gets wet plus it's got that protecting layer on there like i said it was drenched but um 
it kept working and I'm still warm. So thank goodness for that. Fixed the tarp up and went back to sleep and occasionally was woken up by the wind. Um, probably wasn't the best place to set up considering the weather conditions, but that's okay. Um, yeah, it definitely stopped raining. Finally, it rained all night, but I'm gonna, I guess, take advantage of that. I don't know that I'm gonna cook breakfast here, although I am starving. I woke up very hungry today, but I think I'm just gonna take my opportunity to pack up everything and then I'll grab the tarp last and we'll just get on the trail. As you can see, that it's a little less fog this morning. I can actually see out through there. No, no, it's pretty foggy, but it's less so than yesterday. I couldn't see off of this ridge at all. All right, I'm gonna lay for a couple more minutes and then uh, reluctantly get up, get packed up, get back on the trail. All right, I do believe, according to my GPS, this is the beginning of the ledge trail that I decided not to try to navigate last night. I don't see any indicator whatsoever that the trail starts here, but it looks a little bit like a trail. Although I'm crouched over here, it's low. But we'll see, I'm not sure how long this goes on, but so far it's a little better than that first trail yesterday. Tell you what though, these rocks are pretty slick. I've been concentrating on my footing. <laughs> but I just suddenly looked up. Whoa, as I slip more. Let me get over here. Jeez, these rocks are, I guess there's some moss on them. But look at that. So I try to look up and not fall down. And I guess that's why they call it the ledge trail. It's pretty cool. I do wish it wasn't raining <laughs> right now, mostly for safety reasons on this trail, but it is neat. Let me slowly go down this. Another slow start to the day, I guess, but it's better than <sighs> taking a spill out here by myself, that's for sure. This is tricky. I have two reference tracks on my GPS. One's the one from LimbleGorge.net. It's apparently over there. And the other one I got from LGMaps.com, I think it was. And they have a route that is over there. I don't know the difference between the two, but somehow I ended up in the middle. I went down that way and it's just a rock drop off. Um, so I don't really see a clear way to get over there from here and that looks like a drop off too so i don't know if there's another trail lower down that i missed i guess i'm going to try to get over there but i'm going to have to backtrack out and it's raining pretty good to say this is uh slightly demoralizing first thing in the morning might be a little bit of an understatement but i'm going to backtrack i suppose i'm assuming that it looks like the real trail hugs that wall a little more. I think I came from here, or did I come from here? Oh, that looks slick. Definitely glad I got this nicer rain gear instead of my usual frog togs. I think they would have been torn to shreds by now. Okay. This is definitely it. Whew. Coming down that, though. Yuck. So, it's more clearly defined over here for sure, but it's also more wet rocks. That's okay. That is okay. <sighs> I am spending some time on this. And I am not quite sure where the trail is at all right now. Um, it got to the point following the rock wall over there. I can see 
the trail veer off a little bit on my GPS. Doesn't look like it's passable anymore at this point to continue walking along the rock wall. It's just really large boulders and whatnot. I'm not gonna do anything that's unsafe and get myself lost or slip on a rock down here or anything like that, so. The GPS says I'm basically right on the trail or maybe 15 feet to the left of it. Not that my accuracy is super great right now, but I just been bushwhacking. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pretty good drop off right there. I kind of put myself into a terrain trap here. I, I can't go any further this way. If that is the trail, then it's beyond this ledge. It's still pouring. I just not digging the vibe right now. It just my gut's telling me I'm getting in a little I'm just not feeling it. And I'm sure there's people who've done this trail that are probably screaming right now, dude, you're right there or you just missed it. Um, and believe me, it looks like I'm right on top of it, but because of this terrain, I just can't find it or get to it. And I'm just going deeper and deeper into problems here, it feels. So I think I'm gonna, unfortunately, I've been going downhill a lot. I'm gonna have to bushwhack my way up and out of here. I mean, I, I can tell from the maps that I, I do go downhill at this point, but not like that. I mean, that is that is a cliff, and if it if it goes on the edge, well, I just don't see it. Fact of the matter is, too, that I have to take into consideration is my timing is shot, and I already was supposed to do an extra oh, three miles today or so plus. I have a feeling when I get down to the river, if it's flowing too heavy, there's a road walk I can do. That's gonna add another three miles. And with all this rain, I'm pretty sure that thing's gonna be impassable right now. So I'm super behind the eight ball to complete this loop anyway, even if I found the trail right now, I feel. I don't know, just everything in my gut is telling me to switch, switch things up right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna follow my GPS breadcrumbs the good thing is I have that wall. As long as I keep that to my right, I will get out of here. That's my saving grace is I can navigate off of that rock wall. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just carefully try to scale back out of here, figure out what to do next. It is miserable out here. It's not like I didn't know the forecast. I knew there was a chance of rain each day and that meant there was a chance there'd be tons of rain both days. But it's still never, never the, the best feeling in the world. Oh well. No views up here once again. I mean, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was me just looking for an excuse not to hike in the rain. Maybe I truly got a bad, a bad omen, but something just didn't feel right. So uh, something just told me to save this grand loop for another time. And I guess that's what I'll do. Now I still have another night of camping and hiking tomorrow. Don't think I have that many options to not go over at least a lot of the same trails I've already done. The river's definitely not going to be passable. In the middle, it gets impassable even quicker than down at the southern end where I was playing in the pass. And I don't even think I'd be able to get across that now just based on how much rain has accumulated already just on this mountaintop. So that's another thing uh, that I'll have to deal with is what kind of route and where to camp tonight and when and if this rain will ever stop. But so then I'll just hydrate, I guess. Or, I suppose, I could just find a nice rock overhang to hang out underneath of, which is exactly what I got right now. It actually was tapered off pretty good. The rain, it was, it was light, but steady. And uh, it actually just now picked up, but that's okay. Because right now, I got bigger things to think about. One of my favorites from Mountain House. Biscuits and gravy. 
And I added a, a little less water than they suggested to make it a little thicker. Mm. First food of the day. Tastes pretty good. Now, by the way, <laughs> just about noon. I don't know how that happened. But look, the maximum miles I have to do is backtracking what I did yesterday. If I find some trails to switch it up a little bit, I will. There's a pretty good network of trails around here, but for the most part, I know if I could do yesterday in one day, I can definitely do back out roughly the same direction um, in two days. So if you're wondering what my plan is at this point, I suppose I am too. I don't really know. And I don't really think I'm worried about it either. I'm just going to play it by ear and um, enjoy myself. I mean, this started out as being a, a really intense 40 mile, 10,000 foot elevation gain loop. And now I'm just going to turn it into a um, stop and smell the roses kind of situation. Granted, the weather's not great, but I am actually enjoying, I, I almost always do loops. Um, I don't do out and backs that much because I want to be constantly seeing new stuff. But I'm hiking the other direction and I'm getting to kind of see things from a different perspective and appreciate things that I missed before. See things again. It's not so bad. It's a little chilly. It was 49 and a half degrees or so when I woke up and it's been holding steady there all day. Combined with the dampness, it feels a little cooler than I guess it actually is. Anyway, I'm in the south. I got biscuits and gravy, a little sausage. Mm. Can't complain too much. One subtle difference about doing an out and back kind of routine instead of a loop. All those downhills you did. Now they're uphills. In the rain, nonetheless. The rain just seems to be not giving up. We are going straight up, that is for sure. I just been cruising along you know I grabbed some water <laughs> not gonna make the same mistake that I did yesterday I got aggressive with the water I have plenty for drinking and cooking and even breakfast tomorrow um, so that means if I see a dry campsite I'm taking it uh, that being said based on my GPS data I don't see much marked, at least from the linvillegorge.net uh, info. Now, that doesn't mean that I couldn't just, well, go off trail and camp anywhere. But for the most part, that data is pretty extensive. And uh, if there's no campsite, potential campsite, at least markers there, um, then it's probably not too good. It's probably too dense. Although, as I say that... <laughs> didn't plan this but there's a little offshoot here i believe i'm on the red south trail right now looks like 
sketchy fire pit. All right, this ain't bad. I mean, all I need is two trees and a clearing. I don't even really need a clearing. Huh. <laughs> Maybe all I needed to do was talk about it. I think I'm gonna put up. Yeah. Might just do it right here. Like I said, I got the water. And this rain is picking up, so I need to uh, stop yapping and start making moves. But I think from this tree to that big tree should be good. But here comes another wave of rain. And I, first things first, better get a tarp up. I'm ready for dinner. Peak refuel. Last night, chicken Alfredo pasta was really good. A good Parmesan flavor and um, kind of a grilled chicken flavor as well. It was really good. So we'll see what goes on with this beef pasta marinara. Uh, <laughs> the crazy thing with these, um, my mountain house meals are usually like 500 calories a piece. But this guy is 1,000 calories. One cup of water, 10 minutes, and next thing you know, we'll be eating some uh, pasta. Mm. Marinara sauce. That's mm, awesome. Yep. I can dig on that. Recline in the hammock. Maybe listen to an audio book or a podcast and uh, hit the hay. Rain. It's apparently my new reality. <laughs> I think it's official. It's just never going to not rain. I've been just hanging out in my hammock this morning, reluctant to get out. I don't have a ton of miles to do today, and I got a hotel before I have to make the trek home. So that's nice. Um, it's 7:45. I've been up since daylight, which was six-ish. But I've been just hanging here listening to an audiobook and um, relaxing. I got my food bag down. Um, there are bears around here, so you do want to make sure to hang your food in a tree. But during a slight break in the rain, I went out and got that. So I got my breakfast today, which is pretty easy. Um, granola with milk and blueberries. And this is simple. I just add a half cup of cold water to it, which my water's probably pretty cold. Looks like it went down to 51 was the low last night. And right now it's a couple degrees higher. So I got that. And then I got to give a big thanks to Susie in Texas. I checked my PO box a little while back, which is where I get um, free, free sticker requests, which by the way, if you want a free sticker, feel free to Check out the video description. Um, but I got a package instead of envelope. And when I opened it up, it was these. Maxim. And according to the note from Susie, uh, thanks for the vids. Been watching a while. I keep these in my gear bag when I go into the woods. Korean coffee sticks, all in one. One stick is weak, two sticks is perfect or is that a three i don't know i'm gonna go i'll go with two uh thanks from Susie in texas so all in one that leads me to believe and they are kind of they got a little weight to them so i'm thinking maybe that means they have cream and sugar in them already pretty cool so thank you Susie. Uh, definitely has cream and sugar in it, it appears. Smells good. I like that. All in one. It is definitely all in one. I might go for a third one. 
really get some pep in my step today and uh, just enjoy the view here. That's one thing I think I, I, I was sitting here and I realized I think I'd definitely take for granted sometimes. And I think for people who've never hammock camped but have only tent camped, um, maybe an advantage you don't realize. Because um, I do both. But times like this right now, um, with this constant rain, I would just be stuck in my tent with the rain fly on, just cooped up in there. I mean, I'd be dry, but it would be a little more claustrophobic. Here, I got less wind than yesterday. I wasn't worried about that. So I pitched the tarp pretty wide because the rain's just coming straight down. So I have a clear view out in front of me. Um, and I'm still basically just out here in the woods enjoying nature and the raindrops and occasional bird going by. Um, I'm not cooped up inside of the tent. I'm just sitting out here, but staying dry. Sounds simple, but um, it's pretty cool. Well, so, mm, yeah, that is definitely good coffee. I, I'm not sure where to get this, the Korean sticks. Um, if I find it, I'll put it a uh, link in the video description. Or if anybody else out there is familiar with it, let me know. Yeah, I got some cold rain and some miles in front of me, so. I'll get some hot coffee, some cream, some sugar, 500 calories worth of granola in me. And then I'll, um, I guess, reluctantly pack up. It's 9 o'clock now. I'm really taking my time. But at some point, I'll pack up, put the reindeer back on, I guess, and start seeing where this trail takes us today. There's some nice flowing water. Speaking of water, I don't think it's um. I won't. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna jinx it. But yeah, seems like maybe the sun's coming out. I'm still gonna keep my rain gear on because these trails are pretty tight with the rhododendron and whatnot, and it's just gonna rub up against me and get me wet. But here we are. Got some water here. I can stock up from that. And then I'll keep plugging along. Cool looking flower. <sighs> I guess I'll just say that's um, why I came down here. Which down here is <laughs> about a tenth of a mile. Uh, in the wrong direction. It is very easy to uh, take the wrong trail around here just because nothing's marked and a lot of them are very faint. So I find myself often checking my GPS and realizing that I'm, you know, a little bit past an intersection. It's um, definitely, I would have to say, wouldn't recommend this area, at least going this deep in, if you're real new to backpacking. Um, it can be a lot of extra stuff to deal with, just the constant navigation worries. But if you're a little more comfortable with navigating, it definitely will give you some challenges, that's for sure. All right, let's get back on course here. It should be right here that it splits off. Yeah, that's definitely why I missed that. <laughs> but. My uh, GPS says this is it, the Red North Trail I'm on. I want to continue. I guess I think that's the Long Arm Trail or something. Not that you would ever know that from signage, but here we go. Now I'm back on it. One thing I did do, and I know a lot of you use phone apps, so I forget the name of that app that has overlays of this area in it. Something with an A. I'll link it in the video description. But if you have an old school GPS like me, I loaded in all the tracks they gave me. Um, off the website uh, linvillegorge.net and it's awesome but it's hundreds of individual tracks so that's cool if you want to click on them and get the different stats 
But I don't know about you, but for me as a Garmin user, I have to individually turn on each track to make it visible on the map. Uh, that really threw me off the first time I came down here years ago. None of my tracks were showing up. I had to individually turn them on. What I did this time is I actually found a little program. I made an image of all the tracks with the names on them and converted that into a transparent map layer. And then I just took that, drug it into my Garmin folder on here. And now I have all the trails, or at least most of them, official and unofficial, um, in the gorge. And they're painted right on top of my topo map. And you can see I got all of them throughout there. Maybe you can't see. I don't know if there's a glare on the screen. But anyway, I found that useful. I don't know if that's already out there. I haven't seen it before, but I'll, uh, I'll link it. You can download it if you'd like, if you find that helpful. Whew. All right. Continue along through the wet leaves. Well, would you look at that? An actual sign that I never even noticed uh, the first day somehow. Although it fell off when I looked at it, so maybe maybe it was on the ground. But LF, one hour. Or Linville Falls. That's the parking lot that I am parked at. Which is cool. I'm building up quite an appetite. I think I'm going to hit Louise's, which is a pretty well-known restaurant around here. It's very close to the gorge. And it's pretty popular, well, restaurant in general, but pretty popular as a post-hike spot mike and i my friend mike and i went there years ago um, for our post hike when we came here the first time and i think i'm going to hit them up today maybe get a little little takeout burger action i always like to do a cheeseburger at the end of my hikes and uh, i guess today i'll find out how louise makes one some fries probably all right i'm making myself hungry though so judge ahead one more hour still drizzling I'm sure it'll be bright and sunny by the time I get in the car. But for now, the rain continues. It's big trees. This, um, this area, Limville Gorge, you actually can see some pretty big old growth trees. And that's because this, the gorge area is so inhospitable to um, moving around in uh, just on foot let alone trying to get a logging crew in here. So um, a lot of these areas in here, um, they just weren't able to log. It was not worth the work, or in some cases, not possible. So if you want to see some big trees down south, certainly a lot bigger than I usually see up in Pennsylvania where it's been logged to death, come on down to Limville Gorge, I guess. All right, well, always got to do a little history lesson. I, I guess that was it for this trip, so... Now I'll just uh, keep watching my footing, try not to slip on these roots, and make my way back to the Jeep. Whew. Well, somehow or another, I got back here, and of course, the rain has stopped. There was actually a little bit of sun a moment ago. But I'm back to the Jeep. I'm super hungry. I had... A lot of fun and a lot of um, times where I <laughs> was being tested a bit on this trip. Um, it was very wet. There was some pretty legit uh, navigation um, challenges in this area on this trip for me at least. But overall, I really did enjoy it. I, I do kind of, I have to apologize, I feel. Um, didn't really get you much of a view of the gorge, at least compared to what I expected, just between the fact that I did a much different loop than I anticipated. And also, a lot of the incredible views were covered with fog. But that's how it is. I knew what the forecast was going to be. I had this time slotted, and I went for it. But literally, maybe just give me a rain check, and I will come back at some point, and we will do this properly. And I'll show you everything, hopefully then, that the gorge has to offer. But like I said, it was still a good time. 
after all or overall i should say so i am beat um more mentally than physically just um staying on top of finding those trails really that that was my whole goal today and i really was backtracking mostly everything i already did on the first day and i was still having trouble staying on top of it so that tells you something right there um <laughs> either about my intelligence or the difficulty of navigating around here but anyway that's about it so i'm gonna go get cleaned up and replace some calories till next time i'm syntax 77 and right now it's cheeseburger time <laughs>